So hey guys and welcome back. Thank you guys for watching Mary J's Hauls. Today's haul will be talking about the outcome of my DIY FMT number six. So I'm making my way down the line trying to hit 10 FMTs to see the effectiveness on my autoimmune disorders, my chronic gastro issues, as well as my chronic idiopathic urticaria. My chronic idiopathic urticaria, chronic hives, is really what led me down this road of doing the FMTs. I've been searching for um, any help I can get for the last almost year now, and I'm still suffering with my hives. I'm still on the medications that they gave me that are literally hurting me more than anything else. So there's several things that I wanted to talk to you today about. So the outcome of my FMT number six. So from the start, nothing has changed or from the surface level nothing has changed my hives still continue to come every day the only noted thing and my autoimmune disorders are still there as well as my gastro issues which aren't as bad i do have to say that since i started the fmt so i do st suffer from um chronic constipation and i've had that pretty much my whole life so for me, finding resolve for that was really big and that the FMTs have definitely been helping with that. Now, it's hard for me to say whether any of the things that I'm talking about are specific to healing my issues because I'm doing so many things in tandem, such as limiting my sugar to make sure it's not a candida overgrowth or, or taking my homeopathic remedies of phosphorus 6c or continuing on my medications of zyrtec pepsid singular hydroxyzine and prendazone um and usually with those medications hives can just disappear so at the end of the day at the hives just disappear i can't really attribute anything to them now fortunately I've been going a little bit further than surface level with this stuff so prior to my fmts i had my blood work done my blood work showed that my antibody levels for autoimmune disease were in a very weird place showing that I am coming to a point where I'm about to have another autoimmune disease and that can take years to develop and doctors don't know what it is. Then halfway through my FMTs, or sorry, I said halfway through, but it was halfway through at that point. So it by FMT number three, I had my blood work done again. Now, some interesting things came up for me and this is basically kind of what I'm trying to get at. So with my blood work, my ANA pretty much stayed the same. It got one level elevated. So that's not good. I don't know if I can attribute that to um, the FMTs, as the doctor also said, that the ANA can vary a couple points every day, you know. So the ANA went up a little bit. I was really hoping to see my ANA go down rather than be elevated. So that kind of stayed the same. We're just going to call it that. But what I also noticed on my last blood work was my calcium levels were super high. They were at like 10.9 which the average is around eight to nine. So after my second round of blood work, after FMT number three, my calcium levels did drop to an 8.9. So that's a pretty good move. Now I'm still above the average, but I would like to kind of move back in it. So my calcium levels did get better. Again, I don't know 100% if I can attribute that to the FMTs. I know the only thing that I can truly say I can attribute to the FMTs is my bettering anxiety and just a better feeling in my body when I do it. But the day after my hives are typically worse. Um, and that is a partial result of me lowering my dosage of prednisone usually when I do an FMT that day. And then also, you know, so it's really just like the prednisone that I'm lowering that could be causing it or it could be the FMT too. I really don't know. And I can't find a doctor out there that's willing to help me. So what I've done, of course, taking it into my own hands. Now, some of my doctors I haven't even told that I've been doing the FMTs. I've kind of just been asking them for little things along the way for my own knowledge and they're not really piecing the parts together. But you know what? They haven't pieced the parts together to begin with. It is absolutely amazing. When you ask a doctor where the immune system functions from, most of them don't say the gut. It's crazy. It's it's a fact. It functions from the gut. So why not look at the gut? Like simple, plain and simple. So with that, and in some of my previous videos, I talked about this, I use the Flore um, microbiome gut testing kit. And with that, I've found several things that have led me down other paths, showing me that maybe FMTs are the right way to go for me. So, and I will be including either overlays or something of the sort so to make sure you guys can see so when i did my fluoride test it came back three weeks later i really like that company and i'll do a haul on them or a review on them walking you guys through their website and stuff because it truly is a great website now when my results came back at first they give you a glance the top 10 um 
bacteria in your body. Now what they do is they take it in comparison to 10,000 10, healthy or what is considered healthy Americans and that was based on the American Gut Project. So they're comparing you to 10,000 other participants that have been deemed healthy. Now what I saw was an insane, insane overgrowth of certain types of bacteria. When I looked it up, because I am beyond surface level at this point, you think WebMD is going to help me? Uh-uh. Like none of those websites help me anymore. I am reading actual science journals or medical journals going into describing all of these different types of bacteria. Most of them don't really know what they can do, but I can tell you that number one, my overgrowths are insane. And number two, it, it's it's a really confusing subject to begin with. So I'm well beyond the surface level. I'm like digging in deep. I'm listening to like or reading about, you know, different tests on rats and all of these different things. And I'm learning so much. So what I have noticed is number one, the two types of bacteria that are mainly overgrown in my body are directly linked to depression. The main one that is overgrown in my body, which is an enterobacteria A or something like that, it's really hard to pronounce all of them are, is the number one grower of E. coli. Now, my gut test, Flore, also alerted me saying, the levels of E. coli in your body are extremely high, so at 21.7% when most people have 0 to 2% um, are extremely high and I should see a doctor. Well, mm, the doctors didn't really help. So what I'm really starting to think is that hives can absolutely be due to a bacterial overgrowth. And I've thought that before, which is why I did the sugar-free diet, because I thought, okay, if you eat too much sugar, your candida can grow out of control and feed other bacteria, which also can lead to leaky gut, which if you guys aren't familiar with it, it is technically not acknowledged by doctors, but it is a real thing. Like, I don't understand why they don't accept it. Leaky gut basically is chronic fatigue or tiredness, bloating, and those are things that I've had for so long. So I do eat excessive sugar at nighttime sometimes, so I did cut that all out. Now I did notice that my hives got a little bit better from it, and you can go back and watch that series because there was one day where I had no hives. It was absurd, but then the next day my hives came back and worse, so I didn't really know what to do. But I'm starting to see all of these connections, and the connection is between candida or bacteria of some sort, some bad bacteria, leaky gut syndrome and intestinal permeability. And what intestinal permeability is, and it goes hand in hand with candida overgrowth as well as leaky gut. Um, so intestinal permeability means that your intestine has these gaps or is porous, meaning it can let certain things out, certain bacteria out from the intestine into your bloodstream, which could be the cause of my hives. Now, if I, when I show you guys my charts, you guys are gonna probably be like, that's definitely what's causing her hives, you know? And so I even talked to my doctor about it the other day. I said, have you guys ever prescribed antibiotics for um, for high, chronic hives? And he was like, no. And I was like, well, where does the immune system function from? And he was like, the immune system. And I was like, no, it functions from the gut. So knowing that I have a bacterial overgrowth, and I've said this before I even got my results back, I think it's a bacterial overgrowth. I kept saying it, and I kept saying it, and I kept saying it. So. I'm really crossing my fingers that I am right. I am still moving towards a solution. Now, what I also noticed is that intestinal permeability is caused by inflammation. So it's kind of going in a circle now because antibiotics can also cause inflammation, which can cause more intestinal permeability. Um, actually, you can see my little, my little micro chihuahua who just woke up. She's sitting in the bed on the pillows. She's so tiny. She looks like a stuffed animal, but I promise, guys, I am 26. I do not have stuffed animals. Um, I do have a blankie, though, by the way. But regardless. So what I'm seeing is that, you know, it, it's, it's all kind of linked, but my only thing is how do I solve the overgrowth of bacteria? Because what I've read and all of these in depth, in depth, like I'm talking like, you don't understand most of the words, but I'm learning what they are as I go because it's at, I'm at that level of digging at this point, is that that certain bacteria that is overgrown in my body can continue to overgrow with an antibiotic. In addition to that, it is also something that shows that there is heavy inflammation. Now, I also tested my boyfriend's stuff and I'll include a picture of his overall chart because his microbiome gut health wasn't much better than mine. He got a 53, I got a 52, but our bacterial overgrowths were largely different. The ones that he was overgrown in, 
unfortunately. And like, this is probably why that I think I should be doing the FMTs is because the overgrowth of bacteria that he had in his body is directly related with anti-inflammatory properties. It is one of the best bacteria you can have in your body. And it is commonly found in all humans. Now his is still well past the average of healthy humans uh, stuff, but the effects that it's correlated with are overall pretty much good things. So the intestinal permeability could be helped by the bacteria that he has. My only issue with that is that finding a strainer for the stool, which is very important. I mean, you don't have to, I, I do it because I don't like to have any little particles in there that could cause more inflammation or, um, irritation to my intestines or my gut or whatever. So the only thing about that is when you do an F a DIY FMT, if it, you do have inflammation and you are kind of concerned about that, it's a good idea to use a strainer. It is hard to find a strainer that it stuff goes through easily for some reason. Um, it is my least favorite part of doing the FMT is straining it just because of how long and tedious it takes and it's hard to clean the strainer after. But those particles, if they do enter your body, not saying they can harm you, they might, everything, there's a chance of harm. Uh, they can make the inflammation inflammation worse as well as the intestinal permeability worse. So if that is something that you guys are thinking could be happening to you, whether it's the leaky gut, the candida overgrowth, or the intestinal permeability stuff, just make sure to strain your stuff, guys. I will be putting a link to Flore as well as the other things that I am talking about and image overlays on both mine and my boyfriend's results from the Flore test. So you guys can see that is not the in-depth things. If you would like to see more in-depth results from my Flore kit, then make sure to click the like button, the subscribe button, and the notifications button, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.